So, good morning and a warm welcome to our webinar. It's now one or two minutes past nine o'clock Central European time and it's time for us to kick off this webinar. My name is Lars Dahlberg. I'm acting as the moderator and administrator of this uh, webinar. This webinar has got the title, How to Build a Keyword Spotting AI Application and Deploy It on an Edge Device. So this is going to be an interesting uh, webinar for you all. So this webinar is arranged by Imagimob. And before I introduce today's speakers, I just want to inform you that you have the ability to ask questions whenever you want during this webinar. Just check out the GoToWebinar control panel and uh, the question mark icon, and there you can uh, type in your questions whenever you want. The rest of the audience will not see your questions, and we will come back and answer the questions in the end of the webinar. So please take the opportunity. We really do have the experts here with us today. And the webinar will continue for uh, 60 minutes. So. Um, with that, it's time for me to introduce today's speakers because we really have a lot of things to deliver to you today. So let's see the speakers of today. So with us today as speakers for this webinar, we have Johan Malm, Head of Product at Imagimob, and Alexander Samuelsson, CTO and co-founder of Imagimob. So welcome, guys. Yeah, there you, you are. Lars. Hello. Yeah. Thank you I'll hand much. it over to you. Yeah, thank you very much, Lars. Uh, yes, it's great to be here. Uh, we're bro broadcasting from Stockholm today, uh, this cold morning. Uh, when I woke up, there was uh, minus 13.7 degrees outside. So we're trying to warm oh, up yeah. here. <laughs> Uh, uh, yes, I'm Johan Malm. I'm head of products at Imagimob and ever since I started working for Imagimob I've been deeply involved in, in, in research, uh, development and strategic uh, product decisions. Um, and uh, I have been working with big customers in, in many different projects and um, we have delivered advanced solutions to, to complex problems. What, one such project was the uh, in-ear headphones that I was involved in from the beginning until the, the end. Um, and which, which was the first gesture controlled in earphones yeah, in the world. Exactly. Uh, it was a really cool product actually. And um, it's a great honor to work at the Medimob with all our talented uh, engineers. Um, to put all this knowledge that we have from all these projects in, into our main product, which is Imagimob AI. I can only agree to that, Yuan. Uh, it's an honor to, to work with such talented people. Um, my name is Alexander Samuelsson. I am the CTO and one of the co-founders at Imagimob. And at Imagimob, we have, building, we have been building edge AI applications since year 2015. So we were really early on. Uh, we've been part of um, shaping and, and growing this very promising market of edge AI applications. And through my time at Imagimob, I've been part of um, running directly or indirectly 30 edge AI applications from start um, to proof of concept. And in some cases, and deploying these solutions into actual products in the market. So you want, you gave a great example of this gesture controlled in earphones. Uh, another application that we've built and released, released into the market is a fall detection uh, system inside a watch for the elderly, uh, which is another great example of what this technology can do. So that watch uh, protects the elderly and, and warns uh, if someone is falling over and has to, uh, six months of battery life, thanks to uh, edge AI technology from, from Imagimo. Um, and already in 2015 at Imagimo, we had this belief that AI will move away more and more out of the cloud and into the devices where the actual data is generated, because this gives a lot of benefits and the application that we will show and build together today is a great example. Uh, of this. Right, Yvonne. So, um, 
let me just switch over here. Um, so exactly. why should one do audio classification uh, on the edge you want? Uh, that's a great question and I actually got it from my uh, daughter yesterday evening. Um, why, why do you do this? And um, one example uh, that I told her, uh, because today we will build a, an audio classifier um, that can run on the edge, which means on a, on a small processor, on a small MCU uh, microcontroller. And uh, what we will do today is, is to train it on the words up and down to recognize those two words. And uh, for instance, IKEA uh, does a lamp uh, bulb with a, a small processor in it, uh, and we could actually run this on this application on that uh, MCU and and monitor uh, the, the light by saying up and down. So that that's that's one uh, use case we we could we could have here. Mm. And the benefits is of course um, you wouldn't like to, to have this bulb uh, connected to the cloud all the time and listen to to what we say at home. That would be um, so, so privacy reasons is one, one thing. Mm. Uh, reliability, I mean, uh, in, in many parts of, of our world, in fact, most parts of our world is not connected to the cloud um, uh, or to the internet. So reliability, uh, autonomy, those things, uh, it's very important. Exactly, uh, you can build an application that always work um, and it might be um, connected connected to um, a machine that needs to be stopped when something happens, and then you can exactly yeah always always work always be up yeah and that's uh, also about real time here. Uh, this machine should be able to listen to to sounds and and react in real time. Um, maybe shut off uh, if something dangerous happens or or just react really really quickly um, the fourth thing is cost and i think many com companies start to realize this now that actually all that data and and transmitting all that data to the cloud uh, uh, is actually actually a significant cost for the company and um, maybe this wasn't so obvious in the beginning but just, just imagine having a million of these devices out there, um, always streaming all of their data, all of their audio data into the cloud. That that would have huge costs. exactly because we're we're, talk, we're talking sensors now, and, and sensors um, generate data. It, it, it's a lot of data in the end. It, it can be in the in the like audio. That's in the kilohertz range. So thousands of samples per second, uh, but, but but also even more megahertz or, mm. yeah. So um, we're gonna show you today how to build this application using our software service, Imagimob AI, which is an end-to-end -end service. So it will cover everything from data collection to deploying the final application on the device. Um, and what, the opportunity that we give you through the software is to uh, be able to build these applications that are actually really, really hard to build and deploy on the edge. So uh, several, a lot of organizations and companies are building audio uh, classification applications and putting them in the cloud and have been doing so, so for several years, but taking this application uh, applications and deploying it on an MCU, it's a completely different level. Uh, you have been needing a large cross-functional team of data scientists, machine learning engineers, firmware engineers, and even compiler experts uh, to make this work. So up until now, it's only the really big players that are doing this. We're talking uh, Google and Amazon has this in their uh, Alexa and um, uh, Google audio devices and, and Facebook and the likes. But uh, with the Magmob AI, uh, you can do this with smaller teams and even single developers and 
after this webinar, you you will have the opportunity to to do this yourself. Yeah, with our software. So, what exactly is it that we're gonna do today? How how is it set up? You want? Right. So we have uh, taken one of these sensitile boxes from uh, ST Microelectronics, and we actually have it here. Um, so it's uh, it comes with this blue. Uh, cover but we strip that off so, so then it looks like this it has um, <clears throat> a lot of different sensors on it uh, uh, accelerometer gyro uh, pressure sensor but but also a microphone and um, and it, it can run through a, yeah a battery. It, it has a battery but we will connect it to the to the computer today um, and we have uh, we will use a data set of, of um, sound data uh, an open data set google data set which we will train on and we also use some of our own data that is actually recorded using this device yeah and uh, these are the steps alex yeah so the steps that we will cover today is first we will show you how to import data, uh, in this case, this audio data set into Imagine of AI. And um, very importantly, how to annotate that and, and make sure that, that it's well annotated, which is very important uh, in, able to, in order to build good AI models. Next, we're gonna process this data and show you how to do that so that it's easier to visualize both for us but also so that it's easier for uh, the AI models to learn uh, this data. Then we're gonna train it, show you how to train it through our training service. Uh, and then we're gonna evaluate the data in a very detailed way, uh, or evaluate the models in a very detailed way uh, in order to be able to pick the best performing models. And finally, still in the MagMob AI, we're gonna optimize and translate this trained model that we select into C code. And then we're going to move out of Imagimob AI uh, into um, STM Cube, which is a tool from, uh, uh, from ST. And we're going to show you how to integrate this C code in a very quick manner into the firmware of this device. And finally, we're going to show you a live demo of this application running in real time, uh, detecting our ups and downs here um, yeah and at the end there will be some time for you to to um, answer uh, to ask us questions and and we will um, give you some answers there um, and please stay until the end because there's some goodies for you so at the end of the webinar you will get a link um, where you can sign up get the software for free to try it out um, and the 10 lucky ones of you will also win this device. Yeah. Um, so you will all be able to replicate what we're showing you today, but some of you will even get the hardware so that you can test it live um, by yourselves. So should we jump into it, Simon? Yeah. Um, so what you see here is a manual AI. And yeah, you are connected here, right? Mm. <clears throat> Good. Uh, yeah, so this um, is ImageMob AI. Uh, we call it the studio. Um, so ImageMob Studio. Um, and this is where you do these projects from the <clears throat> beginning until the end. Um, and the first thing I will show you is that we have a keyword spotter starter project. And so that this is a relatively new feature that we uh, launched um, in the last release uh, where we have starter projects. That means um, projects that, that intend to make it easier for the customers to, to get started. And, and each of these projects has 
essentially everything you need uh, to, to get the ready model. Mm -hmm. It has some example data, um, uh, pre-trained models and um, preprocessors and, and everything like that. And <laughs> here we have a keyword spotter project. Um, so it actually here, if I if I press OK here, it, it will download the database and and um, pre-trained models. Um, so, so we've already done that. Yeah, well, exactly. So here I, I have have uh, started up a, a new project and. The first tab here, we will follow the processes we follow from from the top on, until the bottom here, uh, all these tabs. And the first is the data tab. So what we will do is to import some data to 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 this project. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, but before that, I will run this auto label script. Um, because in this database uh, we have wave files and and it's recorded so that it's one word per file and what we would like to do is to connect uh, a few instances of this word together on on on, on a timeline uh, so that when we sweep this data with a with a sliding window we will see not only the one word uh, in its uh, full uh, content, we will also see, um, slide over it and, and see a fourth of it and, and, and half of it and, and so on. Uh, and, and this script will do exactly that. So it connects the words together and it will also remove some, some uh, bad uh, recordings and, and things like that. So, um, this is a this is a script that we we have created. You see, it, it removes some outliers and and uh, and you will get access to this and yeah, and, exactly and the source code of that. Exactly. Um, so I did this for the down word oh, here. Okay. So then the, the end result looks like this and. <clears throat> so I can I just double click the, the data file here and I can play through uh, the data and what you see is that I have put uh, or this script puts uh, course labels so this is labels that, that uh, around the word down but what I can do now in this tool list, I can uh, fine tune these these labels, and and then yes, the press Control S and I, and I save this this file. And this is uh, one of the concepts in um, in Magic Mob AI that you can put all of the data, uh, open up all of your data, and put it on a timeline like this, and visualize it, yeah. and and look at annotations and play it back. Um, and edit everything um, easily until it looks right. Exactly. Um, right. So when I'm done with with the, all my labels, uh, I oh right. So let's see. Um, I go back to to this tab where I add the data, and uh, here I can add. It's it's up, down, and, and some background noise. So 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 exactly. The, the, now I add the data to the project, and this view is really nice, I think, because you see this um, status uh, status here. So so I I can immediately see that that the data looks good. Um, here you see a little warning sign, and that that means uh, that this data was unlabeled, so so no label in this file, and that's okay because this is background noise. And I have one label for down, one label for up, 
uh, but no label for, for other sounds. So, so that's fully correct. So this view is really a time saver. Um, if you would have any inconsistencies in your data, yeah. uh, which is very common in audio data that you find, you use a uh, data set and some of the data will be in 16 kilohertz mono and some might be in 48 kilohertz yeah. stereo. Um, you would not be able to train an AI model on, on that because the input needs to be consistent. Yeah. Here you immediately get notified of your inconsistencies um, uh, and errors. You would see if you had put the wrong label somewhere because it would have shown up here yeah. on the right. Uh, so, and we we've built this because we we have encountered all of this in in our projects and uh, we've made all of the painful mistakes. Yeah, exactly. So that you don't have to. <clears throat> exactly. So this looks fine. Um, I see the frequency is 16 kilohertz uh, and. Yeah, so, right, and one other thing, uh, here you see that, that the data is in either of these three sets, so it's in the train validation test set, and I can change the, the target size here. Um, and what's the purpose of the different sets? So? Yeah, exactly, it's, it's um, the model is, is trained on, on the training data, uh, and then it's tuned on the validation data, and finally it's tested on on unseen data. So that's like the fundamentals of of, um, of machine learning. Mm -hmm. uh, and what I can do is is to put individual uh, data files in in different sets like this. So there is a lot of things you can do managing your your data in this step. Then, if we move to the next uh, tab here, uh, I can again see that I have only like two two classes and, and one unlabeled implicit class. Mm. So, so this tab gives you an overview of the distribution of all of your data. Right? Yeah, exactly. And and I have a weight here that I, <clears throat> um, uh, if we have an unbalanced data set, uh, which is usually the case when you collect data for certain events like this, uh, and you have an unlabeled background class. Um, I can I can put the sensitivity a bit higher on on uh, uh, on the classes that have fewer samples. So I usually do something like that, and that means that um, otherwise the AI model might be trying to optimize getting most of the data correct and missing these important yeah, uh, exactly. uh, words that we are actually looking for. Yeah. Um, so, um, we're almost uh, have to. <laughs> yeah, so we, we already went through the data collection um, and annotation and how to manage the data. And the next step we're going into now is how to process the data. And this is a very important step where we put, put a lot of effort um, mm -hmm. because when building AI models for edge devices, this is very important. Um, you could train an AI model without processing the data. You could feed in the raw data. Yeah, right? and that's actually, the era of the, of the deep learning that we actually um, let the model um, look at all the data and, and because what we realized a couple of years ago uh, or, uh, or actually more than that now uh, is that the model if you if you build a deep uh, model with many neural network layers it can figure out a lot of things that that we cannot see sometimes mm -hmm. uh, and and we follow that approach uh, but but we also have to think about getting a small model that can run uh, on an edge device so we have to I'm, I'm thinking of this like chewing the data slightly mm -hmm. uh, so so, so it, it it's easier for the for the model to digest and this can make a massive difference yeah um, with some 
clever pre-processing in this case for audio data yeah yeah you can reduce the size of the model and and the inference time how, how fast it runs on the device by um, a factor of 10 or 50 even. yeah uh, so it wouldn't be possible um, to put the raw the raw audio data and classify it on, on this device that we show you guys here today exactly so so but what we're looking for is uh, relatively general preprocessors like like in this case we have a an um, oscillatory data so it goes it's composed of waves so um, uh, a good preprocessor in, in in those cases is is a Fourier transform um, so that's what we have here we we start with a sliding window that collects a fraction, yeah, of, a fra data. A fraction of the data uh, and then uh, we we filter it uh, or smooth it a little bit and, and perform the, the Fourier transform and, and then we take the norm of it so up until here we we have um, basically a power spectrum of the data uh, so so that could be used as, as a preprocessor on its own but what we did in this case is to apply a MEL filter on that data and that's a that's a typical preprocessor for for audio applications uh, and it actually tries to mimic um, what how our hearing uh, works mm. because this smell filter is actually um, uh, the perceived um, when when we try to, to hear uh, a difference between tones uh, uh, we tend to have a higher resolution on, on the lower uh, on the lower spectrum yeah. than on the higher one so so this is a little bit a, a logarithmic uh, uh, filter bank and this is very important because that means that we remove everything that the ai model doesn't have to care about exactly it's reducing the, the data uh, amount uh, because actually the, it kind of focus on on the important things that 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 distinguish words from each other and and don't worry we will show soon show you a visualization so you will see yeah uh, how this actually looks like that's actually a really nice thing because you see down here uh, we can create track from preprocessor so what what this function does is that it it goes through all the data in the database uh, and process it through this all these steps and, and writes it out to to a file and i already did that of course um, and then we can take a look at uh, how down looks like so what you see here now is the raw data on top and below that this uh, spectrogram that yeah visualizes yep. how we as humans are hearing this yeah this, this, in, this in is sometimes. really nice i almost become a, a um, audio nerd in, in this project this is really nice you see um, uh, that that the words really resemble each other uh, you have this little uh, diagonal thing here and then uh, the, the big shank on the bottom uh, so what we look what we're looking for in, in this uh, step is is that the words within one class actually look like each other because they they yeah, mm. they they should and and this is something uh, that we've learned and proven over and over that if we as human can see the similarities between the same word here mm. or the same event the AI model will be able to figure it out yeah so if you've reached that point and your data is well annotated then you're extremely well set up for, yeah for a exactly. successful uh, project and here i can just show how, how up looks like and it's it's uh, quite different and that's also a very good thing to look for that your different classes yeah uh, are easily to, i mean 
to separate from each yeah, other. Yeah, exactly. Right. So that's about the preprocessor. Uh, let's go back. Um, so you, you see that finally here we, we put all these um, uh, 40 features into a new window composed of 50 such features. Um, and those will be then fed into the neural network. So why you want did you select uh, uh, that size of the window, 50? Right, window that's length? a good question. So um, what we're looking for is to have a, a, a window in the end that covers your uh, biggest data, mm -hmm. uh, which in this case is down. It's it's roughly half a second long. So that's why I've chosen that size here. So that's the rule of thumb. Capture your longest instance of the longest word yeah. with the window. Uh, okay, so now we've gone through the processing of the data. Now it's time to uh, start generating some models. Yeah, and uh, that's this step. Uh, so if I press generate, generate model list we will generate so this is what is usually referred to as uh, auto ml so so we actually we're not sure in the beginning exactly uh, which layers that that are good in this case uh, what what kind of model that that is the best we we have a uh, the experience will tell you um, in what direction to look for but but we make it easy for for the users uh, to actually generate a list of models and then train all these models. So you don't have to be a machine learning expert. Here. Exactly. Um, you can generate really good models without being that. Yeah. But if you are, we will show you soon. You're able to go into all the details. But we put a lot of effort into um, creating this of the machine learning functionality so that you will get models that will give you good accuracy while being well suited for edge devices so being small yeah. and being fast exactly so you can see that that uh, the models here they have different amount of parameters uh, and that's those parameters are basically the, the weights in the model that that are updated in, in during the training mm. so they are adapted to the to the data um, and here is a relatively small one. I, I could actually get a quite high accuracy on this one. And 2000 parameters will be roughly 12 uh, kilobytes of, of, um, uh, of uh, memory uh, or flash uh, size. Uh, so, so that's something you can look for already, already in this step here. To know if it will fit your yeah, target device. Exactly, because that's if it doesn't fit the target device, um, then you don't need to go further in this step. So, so exactly. <clears throat> and here we can go go in to look exactly um, what what layers this model has, and you can see the input shape up here. It, it's the output shape of the preprocessor. So the preprocessed data will go in in here. Uh, go through uh, different layers, convolution, 1D, uh, max pooling, and then finally some dense layers and and three output neurons. Uh, and that's the, those represent the three classes, unlabeled, up or down. So here the software configured all of this for you. Yeah. And if we now press uh, start new training job, uh, this data blob will go off to the, uh, our cloud training service. Um, and, and, uh, and all the models and all the data will go. Uh, exactly. So, uh, so let's, let's log in. Uh, did I log into the right? Uh, maybe can we take a look at 
is it the right cloud? Or 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 is it the depth? Yeah, and I think maybe can you see my jobs? Yeah, I think so. Mm, okay. There, it helps to log into the right cloud. Yeah, okay. Right. So this is a training job that you ran earlier, you want? Yeah, exactly. Uh, and, and here we immediately see some statistics. Uh, so the accuracy uh, on the different uh, data sets, train, validation, test, but also the F1 score that's a little bit more advanced machine learning um, uh, accuracy measures. Um, but, but this is, is quite good actually. And I usually pay attention to, to these uh, pie charts uh, to see that the, the number of, of uh, predicted uh, instances it, resembles the actual ones. So, so you can see that they, they look quite alike here. And so we find the right number of ups and downs. Exactly. In the data. And then you can see it more um, closely in, in, in this view um, where we normalize each column like this. Uh, see. So what does this tell you you want? What are you looking for in this matrix? Um, yeah, you, you can you can look. This is uh, like we see here. It's it's a quite unbalanced data set. So so if I just look for the up ups or downs, then I think this this can be quite good to see that among those ups, uh, ninety eight percent were captured correctly, and 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 with the downs here, um, but. The F1 score is, is like more over all the data, so so 96 is is, is quite good here. Mm. Um, so you can you can sort the the models based on on F1 test score, for instance, and then you you if you select one of those, which is yeah model 12 here, um, that, that's actually the one we're gonna run. On, on the device, uh, we can download the actual trained uh, model here, the H5 file. That's the um, TensorFlow uh, trained model, and we can download the predictions uh, on on the data. And we've already done that uh, in advance. Yes. And this. And uh, this is a functionality that we've been working on a lot, uh, the ability to download the predictions uh, or evaluation of the model that we call it. Basically running the model on top of all of the data in your project and visualizing uh, yeah. the result. And this is a very nice uh, view, uh, which I really like. Uh, this is um, up here is the model prediction running on, on, the, on the test data. And you see uh, the yellow line here is, is up. So it's the probability, uh, it, it's between zero and, and one here. So the probability that the model uh, detects down goes up to, to one and then it goes down afterwards. Uh, this is the raw data, the wave, file so with this well basically you can see and you can even play back uh, let's let's show that you want you can even play back how the model behaves uh, in in real time without having to deploy on any devices exactly so this is an extremely powerful uh, way of essentially running a field test uh, in front of your computer yeah before uh, going on to test it live. 
exactly to keep the the development cycle here um, short and, and fast uh, so, so here down here this line is is translated to to a label um, so we by playing here we can see that this model this is actually your um, my words <laughs> your, your downs uh, which we try out here um, exactly so we could see it, it, it did a good job there right so uh, that's uh, the model evaluations uh, and and let's say that we're happy with this um, Then we would like to, um, to, to translate uh, this train model to C code that we can put on this device. Because at, at the moment, this is a, a TensorFlow model. It needs to run in a Python environment. Mm. It's suitable for running on a PC or in the cloud. Yes, exactly. But um, not possible to run uh, in an embedded system. In embedded systems, C is still the language of choice. <laughs> C is king. <laughs> C is king. Um, so we open up the, the H5 model. We go to the Edge tab. Um, you see this little MCU icon. And, and here we have a lot of settings you want. Yes, and I will not talk about all of them right now, but um in in this here you can see input file and, and output file that means we we perform a, a test to make sure that this generated c code and the python uh, code uh, generates exactly the same output mm. um i will skip that for now because i know that that's the case um so what happened now when you push the build edge button? So now we have generated a C code. Um, that's actually very quick. Uh, we can see some statistics. Um, now I took a little bit bigger model uh, with 11,000 parameters. It has 26.6 kilobytes of RAM uh, and, and uh, 25 kilobytes of, of um, uh, oh, actually, th those two numbers are uh, f like 50% uh, 50k RAM and and almost 50k of, of flash. Mm. And this is just a. And and this we will have a quick look at it, I think. But uh, this uh, C code is completely self-contained, and it contains uh, the model and the preprocessor and a simple API for for. Uh, executing the model yeah the, and and you get well as part when you generate c code with our service you completely own the c code so there's no royalties you can deploy mm -hmm. this however you like uh, you can modify it however you like yeah and that's a very good reason for generating c code and not generating some uh, intermediate code or some machine language uh, by generating c code you can dig into this if you have to or want yeah, to exactly. and, and, and change it or optimize it or exactly. any way you want. So this is what it looks like. It's it's um, uh, it's optimized in such a way that it's actually very well written C code. We have put a lot of efforts on doing this really 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 good and it's it's also easy to um interact with yeah to, to, to call this um we we have three uh methods that we interact with one is the first one is that we initialize this code uh, then we enqueue data so which means that we we take um sensor data and we just put it into 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 this function 
And then here we dequeue, meaning that we take out the predictions. Mm. So that, that's it. And, and this code is, um, yeah, there's no external dependencies. Right. So you only need the C file and the header file. Yeah, that's um, it. So, and that's what we will show now. Yeah, so now we went through all of the steps uh, inside Imagine of AI. Yep. We've gone from data collection uh, to T code. And now we're going to show you how to integrate this into the firmware of the device. Exactly. Uh, so we'll move over from Imagine of uh, Studio. Imagine of AI over to STM Cube from ST. Yes, and um, that's here. Um, I need to oh, that's where I'm. So, um, so what have you done yeah. here to to set this up? What what I've done is to uh, download a, a project um, that fits like a, a firmware that that. Uh, is suited for this ST device uh, from uh, ST Microelectronics uh, webpage. So one of uh, ST's starter products, you might say. Yeah, exactly. And and then uh, so. The yeah, so we just need to add two files to this project. One is the header file, uh, model.h. I just added that one here. And then in the source um, directory, I add uh, model.c. Mm. And in the main.c, so the main program, uh, I go to the to the function that that uh, where the, the microphone data is is actually collected, and you see here it's uh, this function is called when one millisecond of microphone data is is available. Mm. Okay, so when that's available, I enqueue that data into our Model? Our model, yeah. And then down here in this while loop, I dequeue uh, the, the model predictions. And here I just output the, um, the model prediction when it has a um, probability above 0 0.9. Yeah, so, so from the model at any moment in time, you will get uh, confidence values or probabilities according to the model that it's either up down or background yeah noise, exactly right? so 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 this um the output here is is a number three numbers uh between uh, zero and, and 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 one and the sum of them are always one yeah exactly <clears throat> the sum exactly the probability that that it hears something is it's one it's one <laughs> If the microphone is on, <laughs> yeah. Um, and here I just uh, um, turn on either the blue or the uh, blue but um, blue LED for for up or the green one for for down. And I also print oh, out sorry. on the terminal here. So yeah, that's that's about that. And when I'm ready here, I just uh, compile this code which will generate a dot bin file uh, and then I use the ST um, pro uh, ST cube programmer to uh, to flash it uh, we don't have have time to, to to flash it right now I I already did that but that's not uh, that's a very it only thing. takes uh, a couple of minutes to do that but um, so what we will do now is we've already pre-flashed this board with this model and uh, we are now plugging in the board just to give it power but everything is running inside of the board 
um, and you one will start up the program in the board and and uh, activate the microphone and then um, we will test it live and see how well it detects our keywords so what you see here is of course the board it has a blue and a green led uh, on it and you have a terminal here which where you see zeros and zeros is the background noise uh, two is up 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 so what you see here is the blue led turns on when you want up. up down down up down down up up blah 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 up down so what you see here is that um it's very real time it reacts instantly and um um you could power this off of a battery right exactly it's a very compact application uh on uh Tiny device, very low power, very cheap to produce yeah. and manufacture. Um, and we, yeah, we, we actually have a, a, a device tester tool that that we haven't show show you today. But but with the model using two thousand parameters, I I could see a couple of days ago that that uh, it took fifteen milliseconds for uh, one model prediction. So it's it's definitely real time. Mm. It's, um, it's quick and well it's quite complex data it's 16,000 audio readings per second being yeah. processed on that uh, little device through all these um, preprocessor layers uh, neural network layers mm. and yeah uh, okay so I so that's that's it. that's it we've gone yeah from the data to the deployed model and we've shown it to you guys live um, so uh, we're ready for for the q a let's bring that up yes so uh, maybe just some things before the Q&A, Alex, um, so they know how to uh, proceed. Yeah, absolutely. So now, uh, thank you for staying with us uh, all the way to the end. Now it's time for the goodies. Um, visit www.imaginbomb.com and click on the free trial button. And in there, um, yeah, you fill in your email and your name. and in the comment or in the description box, you, you type audio webinar uh, to have a chance to also win this device, this ST device. Uh, 10 of you will, will do that. So hurry up and <laughs> register in time. Take screenshots, yeah? <laughs> yeah. Um, and just here a note, uh, where we took the original da original data set, um, which we cleaned up and added yeah. some data to. If, yeah. you, if you're interested, uh, you, you can find it here. I think we will send some of this information out to you. Mm -hmm. Yes, you will get an email tomorrow <clears throat> with more information uh, to follow up. Okay, so now we have five minutes left for Q&A. I just want to inform everybody that um, we will not have time to answer all your questions, but uh, we have the opportunity to get back to you with answers afterwards um, because the system save uh, all your questions so we can answer them afterwards. So uh, please continue to ask questions, even though we don't have time to answer all of them uh, by uh, using the functionality for that in the GoToWebinar. So let's start with some of the questions and um, we work uh, on as many as we can. So the first one, uh, uh, all right, let me see now. 
asking a lot of questions here. So what is the name of the SDEVB? I guess it means the device. Uh, maybe we've been mentioning that, but uh, repeat that. Yeah, you wonder. You have it in the uh, <laughs> top of your mind. It's a sensitile dot box, and it has a it has a longer name. Um, we'll we'll make sure you get it afterwards. Yeah, um, MKV1, etc. Uh, but yeah, we will share you the full yeah. uh, part number. Yeah. Make sure we uh, we can uh, supply everyone with the actual part number of the device. Yeah. <clears throat> so, um, is the key uh, spotter engine developed by Imagimob? Yes. Um, yes. <laughs> so, just to be very clear here, now we show the keyword spotter, but we could have detected um, any kind of sounds and create any kind of sound detection application. Uh, we could have <laughs> that would have been an interesting webinar. We could have uh, been breaking some windows and recorded that, and yeah, uh, would, <laughs> would have been able to detect uh, when a window breaks, or it could be um, someone. It could be a baby crying that we would detect. Um, so it's completely our engine. Um, you, it's very flexible depending on what data you feed into it and how you annotate it, uh, you can create your own kind of application. So what you should take away from this webinar is, is um, have a good think of how you can use this yourself mm. on your own or in your organization. What kind of applications could you build if you were able to uh, understand audio in real time in, in a, a small device like this yeah and and, and also <clears throat> is there any data that you can use uh, and and how would you go about to to, to actually collect yeah, the collect the data um, because that that's and if you have any questions on that we're here to help with with tips and guidelines yeah on how to think yeah yes uh, so let's continue another question in the data tab what was hey, no sorry in the data tab what does the dimensionality mean dimensionality very good question that's how many uh, well it's the, the dimensionality of the data uh, you can see it as the number of signals so in this case it was one because we have mono data so one audio stream if we would have stereo data, it would say two in the dimensionality. Yeah. Or if we would have some kind of uh, a radar sensor, let's say, uh, the dimensionality much might be a much Two, higher. Two fifty six or something. Yeah, a much higher value because we're looking at uh, uh, maybe many data points uh, at the same time. Yeah. If you if you for instance if you if you think about CSV files. Uh, Common separate files. Uh, you might have the, the columns in that file. That's the, the number of columns, basically. Yeah. All right. So next question. So data processes, data processing is running in mini batches rather than pure incremental. Um, not sure if I understand the. <clears throat> that question, the question came relatively early. Um, mm. So data processing is running in mini badges rather than pure incremental. It might be that the person is referring to uh, we're using a, a win sliding window here. So we're processing the data uh, over 0.5 seconds and then the model is classifying whether it finds a word into in, within that section and then it moves slightly into the future and collect uh, some more data and it classifies it again. Right. Uh, so that's one way uh, of classifying audio. Another way would be to have a model with the state built into the model instead of the state being built into the preprocessor. And that's also something that we're looking into and that we will support in, in uh, future versions. Yeah. Okay. I hope I um, got the question right. Uh, time flies when you're having fun. 
And now it's uh, unfortunately it's 10 o'clock Central European time and we have to close down this webinar for today. But we will get back uh, to, uh, to you with uh, answers on all your questions and we still have a lot of questions to go. So um, uh, we'll get back and you will get an email tomorrow uh, and uh, with more information uh, and uh, the ability to contact us, uh, of course. So with that, I would like to say uh, thanks to everyone that took your time today to spend an hour with us uh, about this interesting subject. Uh, thanks to the speakers and uh, we'll close down the webinar for now. Thanks a lot for listening. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you, Lars, for hosting and looking forward to, to hearing from, from you guys. Yeah. So take care and be careful out there. We'll close down the webinar now.